Welcome to Airborne with Alan and in this video, I will compare two recent flights that I took first to Bandung with Malindo Air and from Surabaya back to Kuala Lumpur with Malaysia Airlines. As these two sectors are almost similar in length, I thought that this would be a great and excellent opportunity to do a comparison video. Now, please note that I will comment based on these two flights only. Even though the airline may have a certain product or services that is supposed to be standard throughout its fleet, but if in this case the product is not available, I will consider the product as not available and it will go towards my judgement. And here is also another difficult one for me. The crew in charge of one of the flights was someone that I had worked with before. And to avoid bias, I will not rate or compare the crew of both flights. Come join me now. Ebon with Alan, Malindo Air versus Malaysia Airlines. I paid 399 ringgit for the business class flight on Malindo Air. This was a promo fare. Meanwhile, I paid 938,000 rupiah or 276 ringgit for an economy promo fare with Malaysia Airlines. I was then offered to bid for a MH upgrade and I made a bid of 340 ringgit which was accepted bringing my total fare for this flight on Malaysia Airlines to 616. Malindo Air offers mobile check-in and it was easy and intuitive to use. I was also informed via text message the day before the travel that the flight had been retimed by one hour. Malindo had two counters for business class baggage drop-off at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport main terminal and there wasn't a queue when I arrived. The check-in staff greeted me and processed my bag in less than two minutes. Malindo Air invited business class passengers to the Sama Sama Express Airport Lounge. When I arrived at 11 a.m., the receptionist mentioned that breakfast was over and that only light refreshments were available. For the next one hour, myself and the rest of the passengers in the lounge were left just sitting as the light refreshment according to Sama Sama Lounge is just a few curry puffs and some salad dressing. I would expect the roll over from breakfast to lunch to be more efficient. Lunch was only ready at around 12 noon. The selection however was acceptable. Even with a one hour retiming of the flight, it was still delayed by another 20 more minutes. Malaysia Airlines also offers mobile check-in 48 hours before departure, but I found it had more steps to be completed than the Malindo app. At Surabaya Terminal 2, Malaysia Airlines had three counters open with one dedicated for business class. However, when I arrived, economy class passengers were being processed at that counter. Thankfully, there was another staff behind another counter that was closed who immediately stood up and called me to his counter and proceeded to process my bag very efficiently and in a very friendly manner. And this was excellent. Malaysia Airlines uses the Concordia Lounge, a nice and bright lounge with a simple food selection and they even offered foot massages. Boarding of the MH flight was early and we managed to push back slightly ahead of schedule. For pre-departure, both offered online check-in. 
a separate baggage drop-off for business class. Both offered lounge access, but clearly Malaysia Airlines had a better lounge experience. Both airlines invited business class passengers to board at their own convenience. Malindo Air, however, ended up an hour and 20 minutes behind the original schedule. So when it comes to pre-departure, the star goes to Malaysia Airlines. It so happened that on this particular Malindo Air flight, I got one of the planes that didn't have in-flight entertainment. The seat came with a slightly complicated mechanical control, but it was more comfortable than the Malaysia Airlines business class seat. The latest issue of the Melindo magazine was also not available, even though it was already the fourth day of the month. The toilet was nice with LED lights, but didn't have any extra toiletries. The Malaysia Airlines business class cabin had 16 seats that came with personal AVOD video, PowerPoint, USB, leg rest, a pillow and a blanket which was placed on the seat. The toilet didn't have any fancy LED lights but had toiletries which was a nice touch. If I had to compare, I would say the Malindo Airlines seat was far more comfortable. However, since it lacked almost all the normal features, the star has to go to Malaysia Airlines. Malindo offered a selection of juices and later newspapers once we were seated. Sadly, no welcome call towels. There were also no menu cards, so the crew personally explained what was available. The crew dressed the table with crisp white linen, which was a really nice touch. The meals were served one tray at a time from the galley by the crew. The distribution of the trays were extremely slow. It took two to five minutes between each passenger being served. By the time the passengers in row three were finished and were handing back their meal trays, the passengers at row one were just receiving them. The tray came with two bread rolls, a very fresh and tasty salad, plus a delicious chocolate cake. I chose the chicken curry, which was sadly served lukewarm. The portions were also so small, just four small pieces of chicken and a lot of rice. It wasn't memorable at all. I also asked for white wine, but sadly it had already gone off. When I first saw it, I thought it was a late harvest or a dessert wine from the color. Sadly, it was wine that had turned bad or oxidized. When I requested for coffee, it was served in a paper cup with a cover due to the bad weather. This is a great way of ensuring my safety and at the same time fulfilling my request. Over at Malaysia Airlines, a tray of juice and water was offered to us and this was followed by a nice cold towel. Service was directly from the meal cart. Menu cards were placed in the seat pockets earlier, except for mine. No linen was placed on the tray table. The tray had a garden salad and a kaffir lime cheesecake. I really wish they removed the starter and dessert cover before serving. For main course, I chose the grilled snapper and prawns in a seafood bisque. A warm selection of breads was then offered from a bread basket which was really appreciated. The salad wasn't as nice as the one on the Malindo Air meal and the cheesecake was lovely as it wasn't too sweet. The fish and prawns were fresh and tasty. The pasta meanwhile was al dente but bland. Hot drinks were not served as the seatbelt sign was on due to turbulence. Now this was a difficult one to choose. I would say it's a draw and Malindo could have won if it had more chicken, the main meal served hot and if the wine was good. Malaysia Airlines would have won outright with its more refined menu if it had placed starch linen on the tray and had alcoholic drinks on offer. While Malindo Air arrived late, Malaysia Airlines was actually a few minutes early. 
both airlines had business class baggage delivered first. Malaysia Airlines gets the star for arrival. Which airline offers best value? From price point, it has to be Malindo Air, hands down. If they had used a different aircraft, the outcome would be very different. Malaysia Airlines itself also has some non-standard aircraft. Malindo Air sent an email confirming that I had earned miles and that it had been credited into my account. Meanwhile, for Malaysia Airlines, I had to check the miles myself. Both airlines provided a great experience. For best value for money I paid, it has to be Malindo Air. But at the end of the day, the outright winner is Malaysia Airlines with four stars. Thank you so much for watching Airborne with Alan. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, like, share and subscribe.